we're going to be creating uh, a sort of a circular dry stone wall, semi-circular dry stone wall, circular patio and a seat just in front of the dry stone wall to hopefully create a nice community area for Old Green Baptist Church. Okay, so we're going to do the marking out and it's a two metre uh, radius on this uh, circular paved area and then we've got the arc to do for the dry stone wall. So we're doing a good old shake. Keep it close to the ground. Two fingers are on it like that. Keep it close to where you're working and then So what we've done is, uh, that's the centre point, and then we've got a trammel, and so the trammel is two metres, so we've got a four metre diameter, two metre radius kit, so that's set to two metres. So this is where the seat is going to come to, and then a slab will go on top of that, so it's a circular kit, so that's going to give us, when we come to lay the paving, but we've got to build a circular wall, so I've got to make sure that the where the, the dry stone wall comes up is exactly two, just over two metres to allow for the circular kit. Just going to give it a final uh, whacker. I've got a couple of, you can see some pegs in here. We're trying to keep it fairly tight to the slabs, so there'll be some mortar, about an inch of mortar, 25 mil, and then the slabs, and we should be up to height then. These little green toppers are useful just to keep it safe. So I'll give the wacker plate, one more wacker plate, and I think we're about good to go. So Martin here is just, uh, he's just finishing off leveling that area. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a circular feature, a little bubble feature in there. So um, he's gonna dig out a sort of a circular hole. We'll put a, a sort of receptacle container in there and uh, we've got to put electricity feed coming down to that uh, so that's shaping up nicely and it will blend in with the surrounding grit stone rockery that they've got which looks really great so what we're doing here is we're we've got a delivery of eight ton of walling stone grit stone sandstone and so I've been putting some pallets, something to break the fall of the stone, just so it doesn't crack any tarmac or things like that. So I've put some pallets, I've got some turf that we've lifted, put it in some builder's bags. So anything to break the fall of the stone when it comes. So I'm hoping the lorry can come up here and drop it in. So that's uh, hence all the different things here. coping so I'm looking for something about 300 mil a couple of inches or whatever however you so you can see I've put a couple there already we're going to sort them so anything like that is going to form a ring you've got to have the, enough copings for the end of the job obviously there are some thicker ones around here I spotted which uh, could be used as copings which will take up a little bit of space he says here's one here for example I know it's a bit too angular that when it nearly Maybe we could use that one. You've obviously got your stones for the foundation. 
some of the bigger stones, you've got through stones which will go through the wall which will bind it together and of course you've got the bits in the middle, the heartings, which are going to fill all the gaps. Uh, so the whole process now is one of sorting all this out and of course there's some stone which is just really almost too big so that'll be like a rockery feature. So uh, that's the next step, to get all your stones sorted and then that'll make your job a lot easier. You'll see when we sort them, when we put all the facing stones and we sort them, and when we get all our facing stone, they're going to point towards the wall so you can see exactly what you've got. So that's what will happen to all them. Okay, right, better get cracking. So what we've been doing is just getting a, a few stones roughly in position. We haven't put the batter frames up yet. We're going to do that next time, but to save a lot of double handling, we're just putting them roughly and then they can get adjusted. So anything that's sort of six inch, 150 mil, I can put straight into here next. Um, we've got the copings, we've been putting our copings ready. So you've always got to make sure you've got enough copings to do the jobs. So that's one of your first sorting jobs. Um, we've got some stacks of heartings to go in the middle of the wall. So we've got two, a couple of stack there, stack there. And you can see we've got some facing stones and maybe even one or two, you can see there's one or two potential through stones when the wall gets up to a particular height. Um, so already that big mound of stone is coming down. <laughs> Here uh, we've got the trammel, and the trammel is this is where the uh, inner circle is going to go, and then this is where we're going to have a seat here. So there's going to be a wall forming the back, and there's going to be a seat. So that's the that's the seat, and that's the uh, the, the lower part, if you like. So uh, so we've got a marker there and a marker there for the trammel, and also I can just I can now go around and position the stones using the trammel. So. Uh, there's quite a bit going on today, but the aim is to try and get it all kind of roughly sorted, get it tidy, and then we can leave it until we come again. So what we've done is set up some batter frames. Uh, if you saw the video before, you'll know how I did it. If you didn't, you may want to look at that one. Just using rebar, 12 or 14 mil, just a couple of planks of wood. I could need to treat these actually, and then some bolts with some butterfly nuts on the end of it. Uh, it's a tricky one because what we've got here, we're building a seat here, so we're actually going to go up, across, up and out again. So you can see, because this cheap end is very visible, we want to make sure that you get a nice neat job of the cheek end, um, and then we'll obviously, you know, we're going to build it up level and get to about 45 centimetres to go in. So the idea of these batter frames, what you do when you're doing a curve, you want to set up a series of them. So one here, you can see there's one there, and then they go around so that you can adjust the middle frame if you want to, to the, the top of your wall. This is actually going to go in, so our wall, the coping, is going to be about 30 centimetres. So what I'll be able to do is when we get to do the middle wall is adjust that so that we've got a batter in slightly to build that up and then the coping will go on the top. So that needs to be the width of your coping on this particular seat. So I've put a series of banner frames around. Um, the other thing is we're putting a circular patio. If you, well have a look at that. So for this circular patio, what we've had to do to work out the radius, obviously we need to know the outer diameter, which in this case is about four meters to give us the outer part, the back of the seat, if you like, because what's going to happen, we're going to have the ring, the outer ring is going to come round, then it's going to step up onto the seat. So part of the ring will form the seat. So we also need to know the angle of where our wall stops. So what we've done is taken a, a line across the middle, and then we've gone two slabs to the left, measured the distance from there to there, to tell us how far around our wall should be. So it's going to finish so that our seat, it comes round, uh, that'll be up in the air and then it steps down onto the lower deck. So there's a few things there to think about. You need to know your outer, 
your inner, so these are about 49 centimeters. Um, so we've got to make sure that we can step in 49, or we might have an overhang of say two centimeters, uh, and then we'll build the back of the wall up. So uh, that's how far we've got today. Uh, we're going to press on by getting the second layer on in a minute. We'll just show you the construction of the wall. So what we got here, we got a trammel. We've got the uh, inner inner diameter here. So that's uh, that's the beginning of the seat, and we got the actual seat itself is on that one. So we've got a couple of dimensions there, swinging round. And then to give the level, we can set a line to give us the level. Uh, in terms of sorting the stone, we've used obviously the biggest stone in the bottom, our foundational stone. We'll try to find a few with a bit of a natural curve on, to give us a curve. Others we've had to trim using a bolster and scutch chisel. We sorted out the stone. Chris at the back there, I've set him up, he's doing some copings. So uh, we've done one template one, and then he's cutting them all down so that they'll all be a similar size, about 12 inches, uh, 300 mil, 30 centimeters across the top. Um, we're filling the middle, of course, with parting, so all the bits are placed in the middle of the wall. So that's your heartings, and you want to try and slightly lean the stone back if you can a little bit to give you the batter. So what you don't want is any ski slopes where the the, 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 the you don't want any ski slopes that are going this way because that's going to be hard to bring your wall back so that it's all nice and got a nice batter on it and uh, nice and stable. Uh, so that's where we are. Uh, we'll have a look at the next layer a little bit later on. So we've just got the wall up, there's one or two little bits to do as you can see. Um, just a little bit of trimming with the scutch chisel. But we're ready now to lay the ring of paving across the top, which of course is going to drop down and then be part of the paving for the floor. Um, and then we're going to go up a bit higher at the back. Uh, we're going to build up and we're actually going to build on the very back of the slab as well, uh, just to, to stop this problem of people flipping the top off. Uh, we're also going to paint it, we've got some SBR which uh, we've mixed up with some cement, we're going to paint the backs of the slabs with it, a slurry, so that they'll stick really tight to the wash sand cement mix. So that's the next stage. It's all stopped. So what we've done is we've got the trammel running out to the wall. Um, so that's sort of making sure that they're in line with that, so that it's in line with the one above. Then every now and again we plumb down just to make sure that the we're sort of plumb with the one above it or with the, just a joint. So that's another thing we've got to do. But also you're blending in a little bit here because obviously with it being natural stone, there's going to be some where you're cutting a bit more. We've been fairly generous with how far in we are as well, just in case there's any bits 
uh, pushing out and pushing in. We could have gone a little bit tighter to the outside, um, but at least uh, that should work out fairly well. Um, obviously, normally you'd be putting the centre one in, and you go from the centre and you radiate out. That's the the normal way of doing this, but we've had to do things slightly different just to make sure it all works. So once we've done this ring, I'm going to lay it all out dry. It's a bit of adjustment and then lay them one at a time and do it that way, just to make sure that everything's working really well. Okay. So what we're doing is we're just putting the outer ring in and, and obviously the idea is is that the last one goes in here and then the seat carries it on and so that's what we're doing so we're just putting a little bit of this is a wash sand cement five to one mix a uh, fairly uh, wet mix uh, that we use and then what we do is we paint the backs of the slabs with uh, SBR just so it's nice and sticky and that seals them as well stops the the water and that coming up through them uh, so that's quite useful so I'll just try this one see uh, see whether it's uh, anywhere here or not now uh, we'll have a look and just pop that in oh it's gonna be a bit tight that one so uh, what I might do here it's a little bit tight so we might just have to nick a little piece off that it's because this stone here is just a little bit a little bit coming out so we've got a little piece there to come out and then that will run in uh, you know quite nicely there or I could ease them up a little bit that way that's another way of doing it so what we're doing is we're just putting the outer ring and uh, obviously it comes around and steps up onto the other one now it was a little bit tight with this stone so I've had to nip a little bit off it but hopefully now that will go in and uh, so a full bed, SBR on the back, uh, mixed with cement, and then we'll just pop that into there. Like that, and we'll just give that a tap. So we'll just tap that down. That's it, that's sort of, so that ring comes round up here, onto the next one, so that will be you can see that is just steps up and carries on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a little wall on the back, just only about this high, with a coping on, and that's going to form the back of the, the seat, if you like. So that's the next step. So what we're doing is uh, we're just taking up the back of the seat, uh, just a couple of courses, and then we'll put the copings on top. So we're just trying to lock everything in. Um, you know get pieces try and bridge the gaps as normal so we're just making sure that any sort of vertical joints are capped off if you can obviously get a through or here we've got a two-thirds through which is going through which will bind it together um, now what we did was we we spent a bit of time sorting the stone so we got all our flats so it makes this job when you do that a lot easier you know you can pick your pieces and you aren't hunting around for your pieces so much so if you can spend a bit of time doing your sorting lock them together so you want the friction like that one's moving a bit so if it's moving a bit we'll just lock it or pack it pack her on the back what we call a pinning stone and it just locks it together then try and find good pieces of stone to fill the middle they are important the middle don't just throw them in actually place them to get the friction uh, so we're going to go take it through at this height and then we're going to go for the coping on top. So what we're doing is putting the copings on. Um, often we put a line across the top but these are quite variable copings. So we're not doing that. So I'm just using a 5 to 1 wash sand cement mix, putting that down and what we'll do is just get put the coping over on its side so you can put the coping flat drop it on just use the point of the trowel just to spread it around 
and if you can do a little bit of chamfering it will help it stick. I haven't wet the stones um, so I'm just going to pop a little bit more on there, not much more. So something like that just sort of and then what you can do is you can just pick it up and put it into position like that. What you often find on a stone, they have like a curve inwards and if you can find the curve you can use that to hug the next one with uh, copings. And then what we do, I've got a little sort of uh, joint in, you can see there's a piece missing there, where what we can do is go in and put a little bit in there and flaunch it a bit. Uh, the wall probably, we could have come in, if we'd had a, just a, another layer, we could have come in so it was just a little bit thinner at the top. But we're just going to flaunch that a little bit, just so that the water doesn't go into the top of the wall. And it just finishes it off. We'll, we'll do a little brush finish as well. And you can see that there is the possibility of material falling down onto your sandstone paving so we just put an old carpet there to collect that. So that's sort of doing the coping at the top. Oh. Hey, job well done. Amazing. <laughs> Here we go. Have a little wander around. Here we go. The caterpillar on the top, and so now we've got a nice little area there. Finished at Broadway.